What is up, guys? Welcome back for week four of the National Pokeball League, the NPL. We are currently 2-1, going up against Mr. Murkrow, uh, Merc and his San Francisco Ridge Giants this week, uh, week four. As you can see, Merc's team is down there on the bottom right. I did talk about this. Uh, if you guys watched my GBA videos, then you know that I, uh, I lost to Merc. Because of uh, Mega Venusaur back in uh, GPC Season 5 quarterfinals, I believe, I underestimated it as a defensive threat against me, and it was able to wall my entire team uh, and effectively just shut down everything that I brought for him. So uh, this time, Merc has Mega Venusaur once again, and I'm not going to underestimate it as a threat, uh, especially defensively to me. So uh, as a result of him having 10 Pokemon on his team, he has a very limited roster, and there are a couple of Mons, specifically Alamomola and Umbreon that you see there, uh, that I can take heavy advantage of, and the first Pokemon on this team is designed to do that. This is uh, C Major, Arcomo, coming this week with a very interesting set. I'm sub Salic Berry uh, Belly Drum with uh, Rock Slide and Drain Punch, so looking at his team, uh, Merc pretty much has to bring one to two Scarfers against me, uh, because he doesn't really match my speed tiers, especially Arrow and Coco, specifically. Uh, as a result, I just need to identify those Scarfers, and then Como can go in. Alamomola and Umbreon are huge, huge setup targets for this thing. I've made sure that my HP allows me to take an Ice Beam and not get my sub broken by Alamomola, and uh, I can set up a Belly Drum uh, sub again uh, afterwards, uh, if possible, if, uh, if I've taken Rock Damage, for example. Uh, or not rock damage, sorry, I'm, I'm even HP, I wouldn't be able to sub again, but I'd be able to drain punch and get all my health back. Uh, and then if I've already eliminated his Scarfers, or if I'm behind a sub, uh, I can rock slide and drain punch sweep through his entire team. Nothing on his team can take this thing on once it's at plus six, plus one. So that's the idea there. Bulletproof, uh, it doesn't really protect me against a lot on his team. Except for Mega Venusaur. Mega Venusaur can't really run its standard Sludge Bomb Giga Drain set against this, because Sludge Bomb doesn't hit it and Giga Drain is resisted, so uh, he would have to run a different uh, Mega Venus set to touch me, maybe something like HP Ice, for example, and he'd be able to, to, to hit this Como, but other than that, uh, I did consider running Soundproof because of Umbreon, if he decides to bring that with Roar, for example, he'd be able to uh, to phase me out as I go for a sub, and then I wouldn't be able to sub plus Belly Drum any, uh, any further in the game, so uh, that would be a little bit annoying, but I don't expect Umbreon, and especially not Roar on that. Moving on, we have Captain Crunch, our Tapu Koko, uh, coming with a Choice Scarf this week with Wild Charge, U-Turn, Brave Bird, and Thunderbolt. So um, I really switched up the item, the spread, and the moves on this thing multiple times during team building. Uh, I was originally running a Roost uh, because this thing could really punch holes through his team. Uh, but realizing that Merc needs one to two Scarfers, I decided to bring a Scarfer that's faster than all of his Scarfers. Um, except for Aerodactyl, but I doubt that that would come Choice Scarfed if it comes. It never wants to lock itself into, for example, like Aerial Ace uh, or Fire Fang against me. So uh, I really, really doubt the arrow would come with a Choice Scarf. So we got Wild Charge, U-Turn, Brave Bird, and Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt is specifically because uh, it does more damage to the Aloe and the Kartana than anything else that I could go for. Uh, and then we have Wild Charge, which hits pretty much everything else except for the Venusaur. That's why Brave Bird's on there. Uh, it is a two-hit KO after rocks to a max defense variant, or very, very close. Unless I get absolute min-rolled on both Brave Birds, I do knock out the Mega Venusaur. So he would have to pull some some switches into his Aloe Wish Pass into his Mega Venusaur, uh, but I can always pull doubles uh, consequentially, so... It's a pretty straightforward set, not much to say about it. Moving on, probably the most important and pivotal set to this team is going to be Lyra, our Meloetta. Uh, we've got Psychic, uh, Hidden Power, Ground, Shadow Ball, and U-Turn. I was originally Focus Blast over Hidden Power, Ground. Shoutouts to Adam for uh, for giving me the idea to switch it over to HP Ground because I really only needed it for uh, for the Heat Ran, uh, as I'll probably be U-Turning out on the Umbreon if it does come anyway. So uh, we got an Assault Vest. So this is my primary check, <coughs> excuse me, to his Tapu Lele, uh, being able to switch in on either stab, uh, including Psy Shock. Uh, as we know, Meloetta is a little bit more frail on the defensive side, especially the Assault Vest is only affecting its special defense, uh, and I've invested correctly to be able to take Psy Shocks, even from Specs Lele. Uh, and if I d identify that it's a Specs Mon, then Como goes in late in the game, uh, because uh, I've already calced for Kartana, which is his other likely Scarfer being able to knock me out with anything, uh, and Psycho Cut does like 60 max, so as long as I'm above 
60 after a drain punch, I'm pretty much good to go against the rest of his team. So uh, I'm kind of hoping that Lele comes with a choice item, especially Scarf. Scarf would be shut down by this thing completely. Uh, if you can't call mine in front of me, that's that's amazing. Uh, U-turn is great for momentum, especially if uh, he does bring the Doug Trio. I never want to be trapped by that thing because then it's a really, really bad time for uh, uh, for countering Lele. Without this thing, I'm, I'm dead to that thing. So uh, Psychic. Very nice against this team in general, outside of the Heat Ran. Uh, nothing really wants to take it. Umbreon, as we said, we would U-turn on. Shadow Ball is, is a really, really important move on this uh, on this set, though, because Aloe can take Psychics outside of uh, Psychic Terrain, for example. Uh, but Shadow Ball, paired with Serene Grace, does give me the 40% drop. Uh, sorry, the, my layout's there, but... Uh, uh, it does give me the 40% drop on his special defenses. So it's probably going to be the move that I spam the most against Merc. Uh, and hopefully I can keep this thing generally healthy. That's why we have such high HP. I am an even HP stat, which I don't usually do. But this spread ultimately covered every possible uh, damage roll that I was calcing. So uh, this was the uh, the best thing that I could bring. Moving on, we have uh, our Kartana check, which is his other scary mon. Uh, that thing has 8 kills right now. And uh, he's been using it really, really well. He used Wonder Room with it, which was, uh, I think it was, uh, was it Wonder Room? No, it was Magic Room uh, with it and shut down all items, which was ridiculous. He, he swept through with Kartana at some point, but uh, we do have the North Fortress coming with a Rocky Helmet. Max, max defense. Absolute max defense, because Kartana is way too much of a threat with that base 180, uh, I believe it's 181 attack. Uh, is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, we have Gyro Ball, Spikes, Volt Switch, and HP Fire. So Gyro Ball is there mainly for the Lele. Obviously, if Cortana's gone, then I can use this as a semi-check to, uh, to the Lele. Uh, it also hits Venusaur the hardest, as well as his Aerodactyl and his Dugtrio. Uh, spikes are there because uh, Merc is unlikely to bring Hazard Removal against me. If he does, it's on his Zapdos, and I'm okay with that because Zapdos, if it does come as a defensive Mon, uh, is very, very... Uh, weak to the rest of my team, so that's really nice for me, as you guys are going to see the last one on this team kind of takes advantage of uh, defensive Zapdos, so uh, we've got uh, Volt Switch on there. Volt Switch is really nice because I don't see him staying in with Kartana. If he's spamming, for example, Leaf Blade and I have a Rocky Helmet, he's doing like 8 to me, and I'm doing 16 Reciprocal uh, with we with the uh, Rocky Helmet, so uh, he's got to switch out, and his only ground type on his team is Dugtrio, and Dugtrio does not want to come in on Fortress because he's going to die to Gyro Ball. Uh, or almost die. And then we've got HP Fire. I was originally pain split on this set, so to make sure to keep my fortress healthy, but I told myself if Merc is going to knock off my Rocky Helmet anyway, there's no point in me, um, in me pain splitting up because Kartana has super low HP as well, and I have a really, really heavy HP invested stat, so I'm going to be healing nothing with pain split. Uh, there were endgame situations in my mocks uh, that came down to Fortress versus Kartana, uh, and Kartana at plus one, and I couldn't check it because Gyro Ball doesn't hit it hard, and neither does Volt Switch, unless it's in terrain, and even that, it's not a powerful Volt Switch, so I had to run something to hit the Kartana. Uh, because I'm minus speed, the HP Fire actually knocks out Kartana from full, even from this base spe uh, 60 special attack, uh, if he doesn't have too much HP, of course. So, this is a really, really good tech on here. Uh, I don't think he expected me to bring it, uh, from what I heard from other people, but anyway, it's not too important, we'll move on. We do have Terror, the Mega Aerodactyl come this week with Stone Edge, Stealth Rocks, Roost, and Aerial Ace, so Aerial Ace is pretty obvious, that's for the Mega Venusaur. Stone Edge pretty much hits everything else, he does have great defensive checks to it, i.e. Alamomola and Umbreon, uh, but again, those are my setup targets for the Como you guys saw earlier, so uh, that's going to be really nice. I want to force those in, and Arrow does a really good job at that because uh, Zapdos, Lele, uh, Heatran, Mega Venu do not want to stay in on uh, Mega Aerodactyl. Neither does Throw. Doug Trio is going to die to two Aerial Aces, maybe even one. Uh, maybe four Adamant. I got enough speed on here for his, I believe this is his Aerodactyl speed creeping my creep of his Doug Trio. So it's, it's really, it's really strange, but uh, I decided to go a little bit more speed than just his Doug Trio, just in case his arrow decides to, he decides to EV his arrow in consequence to my creep on his Doug Trio. So that's the idea there. And then the rest is in HP, really, realistically. Uh, I just need a, a lot of bulk to be able to take on the, the Venusaur. Uh, and uh, Aerial Ace is a really, really good move uh, against it. Obviously, Curse Variants uh, of Mega Venu uh, can sort of take this thing on, but there's always the chance to crit and Curse uh, kind of doesn't deal well with uh, my team in general, uh, the team that I decided to bring, especially because of Meloetta. Meloetta kind of just, like, destroys it, uh, especially with Psychic, so. The last mon on the team is Shia Poof, 
the Durant. We have uh, X Scissors, Stone Edge, Superpower, and Home Claws. So David suggested this set to me. Uh, he's like, why don't you just run this? I was like, that's that's actually a really good idea. I can't remember what was on here initially. Uh, I want to say that it was either Diggersby or um, it wasn't Amoongus. It might have been Silvali. It was probably Diggersby though. I think I think it was Diggersby. Uh, so we've got 112 in HP <coughs> as well as uh, 252 attack. 144 speed with a uh, boosting nature. This outspeeds Adamant Cartana, which he's more likely to bring against me because it already outspeeds all my base 95s. Uh, if it's Adamant, it gets the 318, which is just above the three uh, the 317 that uh, that the uh, that the base 95s cap out at. Uh, I've got 252 attack. Obviously, it's going to boost uh, my attack as as much as possible with the Hone Claws, Buggy M Z. So you look at his team. Uh, he doesn't really appreciate this thing at all. Uh, I've got Superpower on there for the Heat Ren and the uh, the Cartana. I've got X Scissor, which deals with the Lele, the uh, the Mega Venusaur, the Alamomola, the Umbreon, uh, the Dug Trio, all of those. Uh, and then, of course, Stone Edge is specifically for the Aerodactyl as well as the uh, the Zapdos. As I mentioned earlier, if a Zapdos comes as a defensive variant, it can't take this thing on. It's it's going to get destroyed by uh, plus one Stone Edge. Uh, fun fact: pl uh, Hustle. A stone edge normally goes down to i believe it's like 64 accuracy uh and then uh or rather yeah hustle stone edge goes down to 64 and then home claws boosts it back up to 85 which is higher than its initial accuracy which is 80 so that's actually quite fun i like that durant can manipulate the uh, the accuracy of moves like that uh very nice paired with hustle so uh, i'm really enjoying this mon but uh let's uh let's move on into the battle you guys are going to see how this played out so We've got uh, Merc's team here. Uh, a lot of what I expected. Cartana came. The uh, the Lele came. I have to identify what that Lele is. The Heat Ren's there, which that I was kind of surprised about was to see Heat Ren. Uh, but I knew that it was probably his best rock setter against me. So uh, and he needed rocks against me. Like he needed the chip on Mega Arrow. He needed the uh, the sturdy broken on the uh, on the Fortress for certain situations. So uh, definitely good for him uh, to to bring the uh, the Heat Ren. Uh, Pretty much everything expected except for that, but I should have expected it. Uh, the Owl is there, the Mega Venus there, so I'm going to have to try to identify what's what. So let's hop into this. You guys are going to see how this plays out. So I decide to lead off with my Mega Arrow as it can take pretty much anything. He leads off with Zapdos and uh, <coughs> Scarfer number one incoming Volt Switch. Uh, so I take a massive amount of damage on my arrow, but I am going to get up rocks uh, pretty early. I'm going to get off the Stone Edge on the Salamomola, and I believe here I get up rocks uh, as he switches back to his Zapdos. Uh, as the, at, the, at this point, I don't mind my arrow going down. I know that his Zapdos is Scarf, so I can deal with it with other things. Uh, and he's going to go for a Volt Switch again. Very good play on his part. I'm going to go into Tran, and I'm actually going to go for a Wild Charge, and I'm going to sack off my Coco here. Now, this is probably uh, a pretty bad play, considering that I had Meloetta. <clears throat> the thing is, I didn't want him getting up rocks for free. That was uh, that was the idea. I didn't bring hazard removal on this team. I decided to opt out of defog and rapid spin. So if he got up rocks, that was really bad for me. But if I got off the wild charge damage on the heat ran, it's at 26. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow. It has a really hard time coming back in afterwards because it's going to take 12% uh, chip from rocks. And pretty much everything on my team outspeeds it except for Fortress. And Fortress just has the momentum out predicting the... Uh, uh, the heat ran coming in with a volt switch so uh i decided to get off the damage instead and sack off my coco coco looked really good in the end game here especially with uh with thunderbolt considering i was mixed uh of course it was still the venusaur in its way so <clears throat> a lot of mind games a lot of predictions that would have come from that so i'm gonna go into lyra here's another misplay i decided to go for shadow ball because i thought merc might want to keep his heat ran uh knowing that i could outspeed knowing that i could uh probably kill this thing with a focus blast or hidden power ground i thought he might switch out into his aloe and try to get off a wish into it so uh, I decided to Shadow Ball, try to get a drop uh, on the Shadow Ball, and he, instead uh, he's going to stay and he's going to go for Flash Cannon. And this is really good for him because this reveals that I'm Assault Vest. That uh, Flash Cannon actually did a lot for uh, an Assault Vest Meloetta, considering I'm so bulky. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that play. I'm going to go for Psychic on the following turn and knocks out the Heat Ren, so no point in not going for it. He's going to go into Kartana, I'm going to go into my dedicated check the fortress and he's going to get off a knockoff and get rid of my rocky helmet so now his cartana can spam moves whenever it wants i'm going to go for the uh, volt switch right here as i don't expect him to stay in he's going to go into zapdos i predict that correctly and i'm going to get in my meloetta again he's going to go for a volt switch it is scarf this this does a lot less only 16 going to go for a psychic here i'm uh, going to try to uh, sorry shadow ball going to try to get a drop again and i do on the uh, alamomola in fact 
and uh, right now I'm going to be able to go for a, uh, a U-turn. Uh, I actually decide to U-turn again because I don't want his, uh, his Kartana coming in on my Psychic. Even though it would do a lot of damage, I still didn't want that to happen. He's going to go for a Wish, and he's going to get out and pass this into his Kartana, which is really, really bad for me, as his, uh, his Kartana is going to heal up to full. And I'm going to go back into Fortress again. I can't let my, uh, my arrow go down just yet. I don't want this thing to get a boost either. He goes for another knockoff. This time I'm going to go for an HP Fire, predicting him to stay in. He actually goes into Venusaur. That does nothing. It bounces off. Uh, as uh, I don't know what this Venusaur is. It could be, it very easily be carrying HP Fire, so I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to get out of here, and I'm going to go back into my arrow. As he decides to Mega Evolve and go for a Synthesis, I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'm just going to go for an Aerial Ace here, try to damage this thing, see what it is. And uh, he brings back in the Aloe, that's fine with me. This time I'm going to pull the trigger and I'm going to go directly into my Como. He's going to go for a Wish, I'm going to sub up, and he's going to bring in his Lele directly. So if I had Poison Jab right here, obviously this would have been great. Uh, but I'm carrying only Rock Slide, as Rock Slide with the... Uh, with the plus six is able to knock out Lele. He goes for Moonblast. I'm going to go for the Rock Slide. I'm going to chip this thing a little bit, 27%. Uh, and he actually gets leftovers. So I see its item. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'm going to go into uh, Arrow. This time I'm going to sack it off. And uh, I'm going to bring back in Mellow. And now... Now is kind of when Melo can start putting in work. I'm going to go for a Shadow Ball. He reveals Calm Mind, but I get a crit immediately on Merc. And I get a Spideff Drop as well. He's going to go for the Moon Blast. You guys are going to see this is, This does nothing at plus one. It does 26%. And I'm going to knock out the uh, the Lele as a result. And now he's going to bring back in his Kartana, his best revenge killer to this. Uh, I'm not letting it go down. I'm going directly into Fortress on his knockoff. And uh, I know he's not staying in. I'm going for the Volt Switch this time around. And uh, I'm getting out, and I'm going to bring in my uh, my Meloetta again, because it's a huge threat. And uh, I'm going to go for a Psychic. He goes into his uh, Aloe. I didn't plan to get a Spideff Drop, but I do. Uh, and as a result, his Mellow can't, uh, his uh, Alamola can't stay in on me anymore. Uh, so he's going to have to, uh, he's actually going to go for a Wish, and I think he takes this Psychic just barely. Uh, he goes for a Wish, and uh, whatever he passes into, I don't really care, so he's just going to Protect. Uh, and actually, on this following turn, I'm going to get off the Psychic damage again, and uh, he poisons me with Toxic, so that's kind of bad for me. Uh, but considering that I can uh, double down with this Alamola, that's quite nice. Uh, I am going to get out there, and I'm, I'm going to go into my Como. He's going to Protect again. And I'm going to sub again, uh, seeing that he doesn't have the best sub responses this time. No Lele. Uh, so I do get off the sub, and he's going to go for a Smart Strike, break my sub. I'm going to go for the Drain Punch. This does 75%. He did have a little bit of HP investment on this thing, obviously. Um, now, I could stay in and just Drain again. However, um, this is the only thing left that can take a Thunderbolt from his, uh, his Zapdos, and it's Scarfed. So I'm going to get out. I'm going to go back into Fortress. His Kartana is now at 13%, so I don't expect him to switch out, but I'm going to go for the Volt Switch anyway because it does knock out the Kartana from here. Even though it's resisted, this thing has no special defense. So now Fortress is essentially just a sack. I'm going to get in my Durant. I'm going to force in the Zapdos. That was the idea. And now I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go back into Fortress. I'm going to sack it off. He's going to go for Volt Switch. He can come in on Rocks one more time. He's going to go into his Money Trees, the... Uh, the Venusaur, I'm going to bring in Lyra, go for a Psychic, do a lot of damage to this Venusaur, get a Spideff Drop, and this once again is going to force him out. I'm getting pretty lucky with these Spideff Drops, uh, but uh, that's Serene Grace for you. It's a, it's a pretty dumb ability. Uh, and I'm going to go for another Psychic here, and uh, I just double down with this aloe he decides to go for uh not go for protect which was interesting i guess he didn't want to be in with his uh his aloe against my como and let it sub which would have been a really really bad time for him so uh seeing that i did have enough hp to belly drum so now i'm gonna get in my uh my durant once again as he once again goes into his zapdos and i have to switch out i don't have a choice uh i need this thing to beat the venusaur so i'm gonna go into my como and i do know the drain punch knocks out the uh the zapdos from this range and uh his thunderbolt actually breaks my sub unfortunately so i can't sub uh, but i do have enough health here to be able to sub up on the venusaur now the only thing that i've seen from the venusaur is synthesis <laughs> That's all I know that it has. I have no idea what's, what set this is. Uh, I'm assuming it's not Sludge Bomb Giga Drain, the typical set, uh, because that wouldn't deal with Como at all. He can't Leech Seed me right now because I would be able to get it behind a sub, and uh, obviously I can't Belly Drum either, so eventually he'd break my sub with Giga Drains uh, and be able to, uh, to Leech Seed me, but then he still has to deal with a AZ Durant. However, if he's HP Fire, he can probably deal with it. So I decide to sub, see what he is. As uh, he's going to go for a... Uh, I get my Salic Berry, by the way, which doesn't matter at this point. He goes for Synthesis. I'm like, okay, I'll start rock sliding this, trying to flinch it. And uh, he reveals Curse. And I immediately panic. <laughs> I'm like, uh, this isn't good. My last two mons are physical attackers. 
how the hell am I going to break this thing? Seeing Curse pretty much tips me off that he doesn't have HP Fire. I really feel like he needs the, the ground plus the grass move uh, to be able to deal with my entire team having this as a setup sweeper. So I'm going to switch out immediately. I got to get out of here. I got to go into Durant. I got to try to break through this thing. He's going to go for another Curse. Uh, I'm going to go for a Hone Claws, and he decides to Synth. Uh, no, sorry. He decides to EQ. Now, that did 51%. Um, we calc this after the game. This earthquake does 46 to 54, uh, roughly somewhere around there. I can't tell you the decimals, but it does around there. So the next one is a roll to kill me. However, um, this game has one more turn, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this Venusaur would have been able to take the, uh, the incoming savage spin out. Uh, I would have been lived with about 26%. But I get really, really lucky, and I crit straight through Merc's Venusaur. And that's a 2-0 victory for your Montreal Havsols. So that was a very, very haxy game in my favor. Uh, I'm not going to lie. The, all the spit-up drops, uh, and especially that crit right there. Obviously, Merc told me that he clicked EQ. And EQ was a chance not to kill right here, because the first one did 50. The second one could have easily gotten him a low roll, and that would have been a much higher chance than me getting a crit, obviously. But still, um, that really, really sucks. Uh, we'll never know how that game would have played out had I not crit him. But we did. This is Pokemon. Uh, you have to uh, expect this sometimes. So we move up to a 3-1 record with plus 5 differential. We're back up to plus 5 after losing 2-0 to Greg last week. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's not a good indication of how this season is going to go. If, uh, if I keep haxing people, I, I don't want that kind of rep, but sometimes it happens. So uh, GG to Merc or BG, whatever you want to say. Uh, that's, uh, definitely go and check him out in the description, guys. Go and see his side. Uh, I want to hear the salt in his commentary, too. So go and check that out. Uh, if you guys did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below, as usual. Uh, if you're enjoying our run in the NPL Majors, our first real run, and uh, subscribe if you haven't already, if this is your first time on the channel, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao.